Hello and welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial I want to show you how you can save your blueprint actors over the whole game and I prepared three examples for this. The first one is this door here. When we open it, it will stay there even when we restart the game. The second example is this book on the table here. We pick it up and it will be gone. And the last one is this NPC. We click on him and he will walk upstairs. You can use this for a quest system, for example, like that. And when we finish the walking, we restart the game. And as you can see, the door is still open. The book is gone from the table. And when we go upstairs, the NPC is here. Great, so let's go. First of all, we need a blueprint structure. So right click, blueprint, structure. And let's call this save, structure, open this up. The first one will be the position, asm, transform. The second one is the relative, underscore, position, also as a transform and the last one is the the destroy status as an boolean let's save this one and we can close this the next one is in game save so right click blueprint class and search for game save so this save game we select it and let's call this game underscore save open this up as well. So this is the place where all the variables will be stored when you save the game. For this, we need a new variable called save actors. This will be, of course, an actor object reference as an array. Compile and save this. The next one is the properties. Properties will be our save structure also as an array. And when we compile and save this, you can see we can add up some properties. In this case, of course, the position, the relative position and the destroy status. Of course, we don't fill up anything because we set it later. Compile and save this. Next, we need a game instance. So right click blueprint class and search for game instance. This one here, let's call this my instance. Open this up. First of all, we need a custom event. So add custom event. Let's call this load save game. The first thing is, does save game exist? And now we need to name our save game. In this case, game save one. You can call it whatever you want, but you have to stick to this name. Then we need a branch to ask. On true, we want to load game from slot, this one here, and copy and paste the slot name here. Then we cast to our game save that we created. And then we go from as game save to promote to variable. Then we need another custom event called save actor. We open up the details because this gets an input called actor. This is of course an actor object reference. And the second one is the properties. Properties is our safe structure like that. Compile and save this. Then we say does save game exist again. We copy and paste our slot name again. Need the branch to ask. On true, we want to load game from slot again. We cast again to our game save. Let's rename our variable to just game save. It's easier later to understand. Then we want to set it here like that. Down here on false, we want to create a save game object we select our game underscore save that we created. 
And as well, we want to set the game save like that. Then we get our game save, get the save actors, say find item and connect our actor to the find here. We check, is it greater and equal, very important, to zero. Of course, we need a branch to ask in both situations. Then we go from our save actors and want to add an element on false. Again, we say set array element on true. The find is the index and of course we want to set the actor down here as well up here. Then we go from the game save again and get the properties. We do the same thing. We set the array element up here and want to add to the array down here. Again, the find is the index and the properties goes to the item and as well to the add. And at the end, we just call the save game to slot function in also both situations. We copy and paste again our slot name and connect the game save object to the save game object. Next, we need a new function called load game state. This needs to be a function, not a custom event, because we need the output as well. We add up an input called actor. This is of course an actor object reference. Then we need an output. This will be the properties as our safe structure. And another one, the found status as an Boolean. We can disconnect both of these because we need some functionality here. We take out our game save, get the save actors, check with is valid if the save game is valid. Then we need to find the item, in this case our actor. Again, we say is greater and equal to zero. On valid, we go to the branch. On true, we go to the return value and connect the condition. We go again from the game save and say get properties. We get a copy, connect the find and connect the return value to the properties. And of course the return value of the boolean is as well the found status. And that's it. Compile and save this. We can close this one. Very important, we go to the settings, project settings, maps and modes and enter our instance that we created. So my instance in this case. The last step is we open up our character. In my case, it's a first person character. It can also be a third person character, it doesn't matter. I also add up the interact event. Of course, links in the description if you want to know how you can interact with something. And we just need to add up and begin play event. We get our game instance cast to our my instance. And then we just say load save game. Compile and save this. The last step is of course to create some actors that we can save. In this case, let's start up with the book. As you can see, it's just a blueprint actor, so right click, blueprint class actor, and I just add up this book here, just a static mesh. So we have our interact function, as I said, links in the description. Then we get the game instance, we cast to our my instance. We get the reference to self. 
and then we just want to save the actor. In this case, we go right click on the properties, split structure pin, and we want to destroy it. And then of course we call the destroy actor function like this. Of course, we need to load the status as well. So we call the begin play event, have a little delay of 0.2 seconds, very important. Then we get the game instance, calls to my instance again, get the reference to self again, want to load the game state of our actor, so in this case self, we right click split structure pin, we check if we want to destroy the actor, on true we want to destroy the actor. And this is basically the simple function for the book. As well, I prepared also the function for the door. As you can see, same thing on the event interact. We, of course, have the classic open door functionality where we check if the door is closed. We have an animation for the door that it's just opening. Then we set the relative rotation and here we cause to our instance get the door relative transform and set it to the save actor. So we save the relative rotation, in this case, the whole transform for the door. We have again the delay of 0.2 seconds, get our game instance, load the game status. In this case, we load the relative rotation, set it to the rotation of the door, as you can see, and then set the close status. As well, we have this for the NPC here. Same thing, we have the interact where we say the AI move to. We have a destination, I just fixed it to the destination, so upstairs, very simple. Then we have the instance in this case, where we call again the save actor and want to save the transform, so the real position, not the relative position. And on begin play, we load it. So 0.2 seconds instance, load the game state, check if we found it, and then we just set the actor location. Of course, when you want to use the AI move to function for an NPC, so this is just a copy of the third person character, you have to place a nav mesh bounce volume. So this one here, when you press P, you can see where the character is able to move. Great, let's see if this works. We hit play, go to the door, interact. Then we go to the book here, interact, as well to the NPC here. He's walking upstairs. Great, then we restart the game. As you can see, the door is already open, the book is gone from the table, and the NPC is upstairs. Great! So, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you have any questions, please let me know, and yeah, goodbye!